Hey guys, I'm installing a Wilwood disc brake kit on my 67 F100. I've done one side and I've started the other. The kit, it's very easy to install so far. I've done, like you saw, the passenger side. It came out really well. My 15 inch rims still fit. Um, benefit about doing the Wilwood kit over a dent side conversion, like a lot of people recommend, is this right here you got a six piston caliper so there's three back here and there's three up here um, so you just have better braking in general and it's not really that expensive for the for the willwood kit for the brake kit and then you have to buy these lines separate it was about nine hundred dollars um, so not bad if you do a disc brake, if you do a dent side conversion and you buy the whole suspension and you get new bushings kingpins and rotors and calipers and pads at the same time you'll probably be five seven hundred dollars somewhere in there um, so for 900 bucks it's not cheap but it's super easy you get you get new studs you get new bearings um, and it's I haven't bled them yet but I'm pretty happy with the way they, they look but obviously you're not gonna see them through my rims um, the 67 or 65 to 67 trucks have really small brakes. The, these are my front drums. They're two inches is the width of the pads. And 68 F100s went to, I believe, four inches or three inches in the front. I think it's three inches. So these, they they just don't work as well. Um, and so I'm happy to replace them. I did uh, two, two and a half years ago put new drums on. Brand new drums and pads. And obviously now I'm taking that off. But... I already had new kingpins I installed about a year ago, or no, two years ago, my bad. Um, so I'm just gonna keep using those. I am gonna grease them before I, I button everything up, because um, it's been about 5,000 miles since they've been greased, so I figured might as well. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see how this works. Um, it doesn't, it didn't stop bad before, but now it's obviously gonna stop a lot better. Um, you can get kits that, uh, Willwood makes kits that fit um, under larger rims so you can get bigger rotors and bigger calipers for even better braking, braking but it's like $2,500, almost $3,000 for some of those kits and you have to have 17 inch rims which I'm not planning on doing. Um, so this is my spindle. Uh, you basically take, there's four bolts you know, right here and you take those out. Uh, you got some of the parts in here and you mount this bracket on. I haven't bolted it in yet. It's got some lock nuts on it. Um, nothing bolts here, so this is just stays empty. And basically you just mount the rotor on, and then once you get the rotor and the bearings all in, there is a, a seal back here too, which is nice. Um, and then you mount the caliper to this. Actually, I just realized, I think I might have put this on the wrong side. So, <laughs> good thing I caught that before I, I, I bolted it in. But I'll move this over here off camera. Um, that would have been bad. Well, I would have eventually realized it, but um, yeah, it's pretty easy. It came with everything. It comes with new bearings, seals, all the hardware, um, and like I said, the new studs for the for the lug nuts, which is nice because I had one that was stripped on this side, so I was only running four lug nuts, uh, which is obviously not ideal. So yeah, I'll come back when I get uh, this bolted on and we'll start putting the, the rotor on. So. So here's the second rotor. I just finished installing the studs. Oh, they're, they're actually, you bolt them in with a uh, torque from a 77 foot pound and a used red lock type. So they don't press them, which is it's nice, but um, sometimes the pressed ones are hard to get because it's hard to torque this down on a round object. You gotta something hold it from spinning when you're torquing it. Um, but it comes with. Uh, both inner and outer bearing, powder pin, dust shield, um, a seal. And it comes with a new bolt, which on the driver or on the passenger side that I've already done, the bolt that uh, threads onto the spindle did not fit. So I used the stock one, which is fine. Um, and then it comes with a bunch of hardware and spacers for the calipers to mount, so I'll get to it. I'm going to grease, I'm going to pack the bearings and install the rotor onto the driver's side. I packed the bearings. I got that greased up, probably more than I need, but I'm never gonna have too much grease. You got the, the seal on there. This is the grease on the end. 
uh, pretty standard stuff. This is it's really good and very tacky, as it says. Uh, it sticks to everything, which is great. I, I know I'm using it out of a tube, but I bought this for a grease gun, so I figured you know, it's the same grease as you can buy in a tub. So uh, now I just got to install a bearing into the back of the rotor, as you can see there, and then uh, mount it up on here, and then that's we're almost done other than mounting the caliper, and uh, she'll be ready. Yeah, uh, new bearings, which I'm very happy to use. These old ones were not bad, but uh, they say USA on them, which is cool. I bet if you buy new ones at the parts store, they're probably made in China. These ones are Japan, which is not amazing, but it's still better than China. So I ran into a problem um, with the two bearings. You can see the difference there. The one on the left, that's the one that I took off the truck, and that's the one that came with the Wilwood kit. Didn't have this problem on the, the passenger side. All right, so it's the next day. You can see I had to take the spindle off. Um, I was having a problem with bearings. You can see this lip right here. This is supposed to be three quarters of an inch. These threads are three quarters of an inch. For some reason, it steps up, and then the included bearing with the Willow kit does not slide over this. Um, that's a problem. So. The bearing that was on this, for some reason, it was larger than it's supposed to be because the, the other side of the truck, it did not have this problem. It, the spindle did not have this lip. This spindle was replaced. This whole kingpin was, or the, the kingpin was replaced, but this whole spindle was. But this looks like this was added on. It's, a, it's not a factory spindle because it should not have this lip. So I took it off, and I'm going to have to take it to a machine shop this week and have them probably put it on a lathe, hopefully, and they could just take it down to this so I can fit the, the bearing on, because they do not make a bearing that will fit over this and is the right size to fit in the rotor. Anyone watching, you should not have this problem. It, this was just a one-off because I let someone else work on my truck. That's at the end of the day that, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know what they, they put it together and it worked. Um, luckily the kingpin was very easy to knock out. It was like nothing because this kingpin's only been in here for two years. Um, the pin that goes in right here, it, I don't know why, but it's all messed up. I might have to get a new one. I don't know why it's like that. If that was, because uh, I, had, I had never taken this apart past the brakes, the backing plate of the brake was the most I ever took apart on this truck right here. But um, yeah, I'll have to update you in a few days. It's Saturday, so I'll have to take this in next week. Um, yeah, hopefully they can fit the bearing on because it's, yeah, that sucks. Um, yeah, so update. So it's been a few days. I just got it back from the machine shop yesterday. You can see they. this is where it would step up sizes and they put it on a lathe and took it back. Fortunately, it cost about $100 plus tax. It's like 108 bucks. But they got it working. I put it back on here and everything seems to work. Greased it. Um, so the next step is to put my caliper bracket on and then the rotor itself and we'll be back in business. Um, the bearing fits, I did verify. But yeah, it wasn't something I wanted to have to do, but that's why I don't let other people work on your truck, <laughs> with, unless you know every little thing they're gonna do, because um, this is just not the right spindle for some reason, but now it is. <laughs> so I kinda skipped over the process of actually installing it, I just kinda got ahead of myself. But it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there's just there's a bigger bearing in the back you put on. Before you put that bearing on, there's a, a seal that you just quickly um, put in. You can't really see oh, that, that blue, that's a seal. It just goes right onto the spindle. There's a bearing right in front of that. Um, and then you put the rotor on, and then there's the front bearing, and then there's a nut. And that nut, you want to seat the bearings. The way that you do that is you tighten it, and you spin it, and then you loosen it, and spin this, and then you tighten it. I just used a chair, pair of uh, channel locks and just kept tightening and loosening that nut, seating and you know tightening and loosening up the bearings and spinning this. And there's not a lot of information on how actually you're supposed to tighten that and how much you're supposed to tighten it. Um, I read tighten it kind of uh, right to where you feel resistance in turning this. So I kind of did that and then went like a tad bit more. Um, you don't want to overseed them and you don't want to under tighten it. But I think I, I did a pretty good job. It feels about the same as the other side, so as long as they're both equal, I guess. We'll see. Um, so yeah, I got the rotor on, cleaned it off. Um, it was sitting, so there was a little bit of rust on it, unfortunately. The caliper is actually, it's pretty easy to put on, but it, 
it's a little bit weird. Um, there's these spacers, those two zinc coated washers and instructions say you start with two and you mock it in here without the pads and then you see if it's centered in the rotor. So we just kind of got to eyeball it. And this one was centered even with just the two. The other side, I think I had to put three washers in and then there's just this one bolt here and then one more down here onto this Wilwood bracket and then you use red Loctite um, and just tighten it up. I think it's 40 foot pounds. I just finished doing that. Um, well, you got to you got to put the pads in, obviously, and you just take these pins out, and it's just they're just held in with a, a little clip right there. You just pull them out, and you just slide them through, and then you put the pads in from the other side. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then the brake hose is the next step, and I'll I'll do that in a minute. Just finished bleeding the brakes after I put the hose on. You guys probably saw on the other side of the, the car, but yep, comes with this this fitting right here. It doesn't. I just kind of tightened it down. I was worried it was probably going to be too tight, but it works. Uh, no leaks. Bled them. Uh, definitely makes a mess. I didn't have a, a tube to put on that, so it just kind of went everywhere. But I guess the paint on this is resistant to brake fluid and brake cleaner, which is good. Um, but yeah, the brake pedal feels firm. Use dot three. Um, I will have to adjust portioning valve on this thing because it's set up for for drum brakes for four wheel drums that's what this master cylinder is designed for but it does have a proportioning valve i don't really know what way to adjust it so i'm gonna have to figure that out if you have a factory master cylinder and proportioning valve you can buy one um, that's a direct swap in to your bump side that goes in and has the adjustability for disc brakes um, and you don't have to worry about figuring this out but this is an aftermarket one designed for drum brakes but because it has a valve, it is adjustable for disc. If it isn't, then I'm kind of screwed, but hopefully I can figure that out. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I have a lot of other videos on this truck and other trucks that I've owned and plan on having many more. So thank you.